Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this satisfying cloth simulation render. You've probably seen these renders online and they're kind of everywhere and they look really interesting, but you've probably wondered how they're made. And in this video I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. We're going to start out with geometry nodes and then from there we're going to create the basic shape, simulate it with the cloth simulation and a couple force fields, create the material and then render it out. So with that said, let's jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in a brand new scene and the first step is to create that basic shape of our cloth and then we're gonna be simulating it with force fields to create that really cool look. So how we're gonna create the basic shape is with geometry nodes. With this default cube selected, let's jump over to the geometry nodes workspace and then create a new system right here. We don't wanna use the cube, so let's remove it from the output. What we're gonna use instead is a curve object. So let's press Shift A and you can use any curve that you want, but what I found is that the primitives, the curve spiral works pretty good. And this gives us a lot of curve to work with. So let's add that in and place it on the left side. Let's take the curve and plug it into the group output. And there we can see it in our scene. So with this node selected, we're gonna set the resolution to around 40, the rotations to around 25. This will give us a lot more rotations. The start radius is pretty far out from the middle. I want it to be right at the center. So let's set the start radius down to zero. And then for the end radius, let's go up to 2.5 meters. The height as well, we can go down to a value of zero just so it's completely flat. Now this is looking pretty good so far, but there's one big problem if we zoom in here. You'll notice that right at the start here, this looks really smooth, but as we go out to where the edges are, we get this very jagged look. That's because more geometry is in the center rather than along the outside. And with the cloth simulation, we want even geometry through the entire thing. And a very easy way to fix that is just by adding a new node. We're gonna go with the resample curve node. So type in resample, select it and place it here. Now this value controls the resolution of the curve and this is gonna be even through the entire thing. We don't really wanna use count, we wanna go with the length value. And then for this length, let's add in a value node because we're gonna be using this value node twice. Let's select it, place it here, then take the value and plug it into the length. This value here now controls the resolution and we're gonna go with a value of 0.04 and enter. So for every 0.04 meters, there's gonna be a new vertex that's added and that gives us even geometry through the entire thing. Now for some thickness, because right now it's completely flat. Let's give it a little bit of thickness by first adding in a curve line. We're just gonna type in curve and then the line. Let's add in a curve line, place it over here. Then to give it some thickness, we're gonna add in another node. This is gonna be a curve to mesh node. Select that here. Then we're gonna take the curve line and then just plug it into the profile curve. Now, currently it's going in the wrong direction. We need to go downwards. So over on the left side here, let's set the, uh, the Z to zero and then the Y, I think it is, let's go up to a value of 0.3 or so. There we go, now we have some thickness. But again, we have the same issue here. If we zoom in, we have even geometry going along the horizontal way, but nothing is going vertically. So what we need to do is just select the resample curve, shift D it, place it here, and then just take the same value and plug that into the length. So now it's square faces all throughout the entire thing and this is gonna simulate very well. Next, let's rotate this curve and then position it upright. We can do this with the transform node. So just add in a transform geometry. We'll place it right about here. We're gonna rotate this 90 degrees along the X axis so it's facing upright. And then what I like to do is also kind of distort it with the scale. So with the scale along the X, I'm gonna go down to around 0.6 or so, or 0.7, something like that. For the Y, let's go up a little bit to around 1.4. And now we get this oval shape, and this is gonna look a lot better when it's simulating. Finally, one more thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a way to control the material later. We can do this with a spline parameter node. So just type in spline, and select the spline parameter and place it on the left side. What we need to do is capture the factor. The factor is the overall length of the curve. So once we capture that factor attribute, we can import it into the material later 
and this will give us a lot of control when customizing the color. So to do this, we're gonna add in a capture attribute node. We're gonna place this before the curve to mesh. So over here, take the factor, plug it into the value, and then we're gonna take the attribute and plug this into the group output. Then over on the right side, let's just name this attribute in easy name so we can find it later. Let's just call it call for color. Then finally, let's press Shift A and in the search menu, let's type in set material. We're gonna add a set material node. We'll place that here and then just select that basic material that's already applied to the cube. So now, later after we've simulated it, we'll create the material and it will be ready to go. So now that we've created the system, let's simulate this. We're gonna jump over to the layout tab, jump over to the physics panel, and then enable cloth. Now double check that the cloth simulation is below the geometry nodes, because if it's above, it's actually gonna simulate the basic cube. But if it's below, it's gonna simulate all of the geometry that we've added here. So make sure it's below. And now if we play our simulation, we're gonna see it falls straight down and it's really, really slow. What we'll do first is over on the right side, we're gonna set the quality of this up to around 10. This will just make sure the quality of the simulation is a little bit better. There's no clipping or anything like that. We're gonna scroll down to the collision tab down here, open this up. We're gonna turn on self collision. This will make sure that the cloth actually collides with itself and the distance is way too high. So let's bring it down to around 0 0.007. The friction here, we can go down to around a value of one. This will make sure the cloth doesn't stick to each other that much. And the quality of the collision as well, let's go all the way up to 10. Next, we're gonna open up the field weights. We're gonna set gravity down to zero so it actually floats in 3D space. And then to get it to kind of bunch up and look really random, we're gonna be using force fields. Let's press Shift A and add in the first force field. Underneath force, we're gonna add in the normal force option here. What we're actually gonna be doing is on frame 10, we're gonna to jump to frame 10 right here. We're gonna be animating the strength value. So over the course of about 10 frames, it's gonna shrink in really quickly and give us a really organic looking abstract shape. We'll set the strength to zero, add in a keyframe on the right side, jump to the next frame, frame 11. We're gonna set the strength of this all the way up to around negative 1200, add in another keyframe. We'll jump over to frame 20. So over the course of 10 frames, it's gonna stay at negative uh, 1200. We're gonna add in another keyframe. And then one frame later, we're gonna set this down to zero and then add in that final keyframe. The other important step is with this flow option, we're gonna set this up to a value of 10. This will make sure it kind of moves a little bit slower and doesn't, kind of, and doesn't go crazy with that high strength value. Now we could simulate this right now, but it's not gonna look that interesting. We need to add in a couple more force fields to actually get it to look really cool. So with this force field selected, let's press Shift D. The type over here, we're gonna switch it over to the turbulence type. And this is basically just gonna add random noise to our uh, cloth simulation. And then the default settings, we can leave them as they are. We're gonna do this one more time, press Shift D. We're gonna switch the type from turbulence over to the vortex, select vortex. And then it's pointed upwards, we need to point it in the X direction. So rotate this 90 degrees along the X direction. And then another important step here with the vortex is I don't want it to affect the whole thing. I only want it to affect a certain portion of our cloth. We can do that with the fall off options. We're gonna change the shape from sphere over to tube. And then for the max distance, just select that, drag this up a little bit until it's past the cloth. And then for the radial settings, make sure to turn on use maximum and drag this up until you get the shape that you want. So right about there, I think is pretty good. So it's only gonna affect this portion of our mesh. With that done, we are ready to bake this in. Let's select our cloth and then over on the right side, we're just gonna scroll down here, open up the cache setting, make sure to save your project as well, just in case this crashes. We can set the end frame to around 150 and then we can click on bake. When your simulation has finished baking, you can scroll through here and see if everything looks good. And if you're happy with the results, this actually looks pretty good to me. You can change the strength of the force field and this will give different results. 
and the position of the turbulence will also give some different results, you can play around with it until you get something that you like. When you're happy with it, we can move on to the next step and that is smoothing everything out. Let's jump over to the modifier tab. We're gonna click add modifier, generate, and then add in a subdivision surface modifier. That looks pretty good. We'll leave the view at one and the render at two. Next, we're gonna add in some thickness by adding in a solidify modifier. That looks pretty good. A value of 0 0.01 is perfect. And that is looking really nice. Now for the material, let's jump over to the shading workspace on the top here. And we have the basic material already in place. What we need to do, since we added in that attribute in the geometry nodes, we need to import that into the material. We can do that with an input and then an attribute node right here. If we take a look at the modifier, we can see the name is COL, all caps. So let's add that in right here. Then we're gonna add in a converter color ramp take the color, plug it into the factor, then the color is gonna go into the base color of the principled shader. And once we do that, we can see it's working. So on the left side, that is gonna be the middle, and then the, the, the right side of the color ramp, that is gonna be the outside. And you can play around with the position of these handles with the slider. So from here, all you really need to do is just change the color how you want. I think for my scene, I'm gonna go with a blue color. So over on the left side, we're gonna bring the value up to around white, and then we'll give it a nice blue color. We'll add in a new handle. This handle is gonna be more of a darker blue color, something like this. We'll add in another handle again, and this is gonna go over to this side. And then this one, maybe we can go with more of a lighter blue color, something like that. And then for the far right handle, again, I'm gonna go with more of a darker blue color. And that looks pretty good. Over on the principled shader, you can change the roughness or add metallic if you want to. Like if you bring the roughness down, you're gonna get a very glossy look and that looks pretty good. You can bring up the metallic and this will give you more of a metal look. You can play around with this and customize it however you like. Another cool thing that you can do is with the principled shader, you can add some emission based on the position of the color ramp handles. So how this works is if we shift D this color ramp, we'll take the color, plug it in here. If we set all of these handles back to white and black values, let's just set this all the way down to uh, zero on the saturation. This one will go down to zero on the saturation, maybe bring it down. And then the right handle again, we will go down to zero. We can take this and plug it into the strength of the emission. Then if we add in a multiply node, we can add in a converter math node. We'll switch it over to multiply. This bottom value now controls the strength of it. And then we can take that same color from this color ramp, plug it into the color. And now we're getting some glowing parts of our curve. Again, you can play around with the position of these handles. So if I set this all the way down to black and then maybe drag this one over to the right side a little bit, and then I can bring the multiply up we're getting this sort of look. So some parts of the curve are glowing and some parts aren't. Another really easy way to change the color of everything, if you're happy with the position of the handles, you can press Shift A and add in a hue saturation node. And then all you really need to do, we'll take the color, plug that into the emission as well, is with the hue value, if you change this, this is gonna change everything along your curve. So this is a really easy way to change the look, very simple with one slider. And finally, one more thing I'll show you is in this color ramp, if you change it from linear over to constant, you can actually play with different layers of your curve. For example, if I drag this this way, you can see instead of being a smooth transition, it's actually a very harsh transition, like there are multiple layers on our curve. And that is another way to add some really cool, interesting looks to your uh, curve here. And then again, you can play around with the hue until you get something that you like. All right, I'm happy with this result. I set the value up a little bit higher. I made the metallic 2.6 and the roughness 2.5, and I think that is looking really cool. I also changed it to ease to give a smoother transition between the different colors. And now I'll show you how to render this real quickly before the tutorial ends. So back in the layout, we're gonna go into front view by hitting one on the number pad. We'll hit control alt numpad zero to snap the camera to place. You can also do this by going up to view, down to align view and then selecting align active camera to view. That does the same thing. 
We can select the camera, kind of rotate it around something like this will look pretty good. And then for the world settings, we're gonna jump over to the world settings here. We're gonna go all the way up to a little bit less than white. Let's also move the lamp in place. Let's select the basic lamp that's in the scene. We'll place it right about here. Back in camera view, we're gonna switch the render engine from EV over to Cycles. I think Cycles just looks a little bit better with the shadows. And now if we go into the rendered view, here is the result that we're getting. Over on the right side, we're gonna open up the color management, set the look down here to high contrast. And then for some depth of field, let's hold shift and then right click. We can place our cursor right at that top position of our cloth. We can add in an empty object. Then over on the outliner, let's select the camera. And then in the camera settings, let's select that empty that we just added to be the focal point. So over on the depth of field, we'll turn this on. The focus object is gonna be that empty. From here, we can set the f-stop, which is the amount of depth of field that will be applied to the camera. If we go much lower, you're gonna get this sort of look, which actually looks really cool. But I think a value of about 0.3 or so, so we can focus right on this part and then the outside is blurred, will look really nice. From here, all you have to do is just hit render and you'll be good to go. But there we go, that is how you create some really interesting abstract cloth simulation wallpapers. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and if you made something cool, please send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. And if you have suggestions for other tutorials you would like to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next one.